The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In, two, in 2019, a Pew survey sent shockwaves amongst the Catholic faithful, claiming only 30% of Catholics believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. This would be discouraging if true, as the Eucharist is central and at the core of our faith. According to the Second Vatican Council, the Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life. There were some disputes about the accuracy of the reports. However, I don't think we need to be we need pew polls to tell us that there is a decline in belief of central church teachings. We see it in the decrease of mass attendance in many parishes. We see it with our own family members and friends that have stopped going to church. We see it in decline of church vocations to priesthood, marriage, and religious life, and in the divisions we currently experience. Some of you may remember that I spoke to you about our seminarian Fong's former diocese in Vietnam. Last month, they had 34 ordinations to priesthood. And in June, 67 young women became holy religious sisters. Their diocese is the same size as ours. I'm sure that it is connected with their devotion to the Eucharist. So we don't really need pew polls to tell us what we know. We're living the reality. What I find even more troublesome and possibly of greater concern than those who have left the church are those who have remained but don't believe in Jesus' true presence. I'm sure this isn't at St. Marie's. They are coming to Holy Mass, coming to communion, there is a sense that it is important. I'm Catholic, it's what I do. But it is not transforming their lives to live according to the teachings of Jesus and the gospel and the teachings of the church as guided by the Holy Spirit. 
according to other Pew polls, and we do have to be somewhat cautious about polls, a majority of Catholics also don't believe the church's teaching on sexuality, life beginning at the moment of conception, what constitutes a marriage as being between a man and a woman, and many other moral issues. And with Catholics, especially church or political leaders, entertainers, people of influence, have these positions, it causes great scandal, confusion, and division. It causes harm to the church, especially for our young people. What does it mean that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist? Even in his silence, he remains the word of God who speaks to us. He remains the divine physician who heals us. He remains the sovereign king who protects us. He remains the good shepherd who guides us on how to live and not live our lives. He remains the holy redeemer who frees us from slavery, addiction, sin, and death. He remains the light who keeps darkness from overpowering us. Only with the belief in the true Eucharistic presence of Jesus does the gospel make sense. Only in the belief of the true presence do difficult teachings, the hard teachings, seem possible. When I have belief that Jesus is really present in the Eucharist, I can, like St. Paul, do all things in Christ who strengthens me. So it makes complete sense to me that as belief in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist has declined, the morals of our Catholic faith began to decline as well. How do we help overcome the lukewarmness and lack of belief in the Eucharist? We must have conviction like St. Peter and the apostles in today's gospel. When many left because the teachings on the bread of life were too much for them, Jesus asked those who remained, do you want to leave too? Are my teachings on the Eucharist too much for you? Peter, speaking for the remaining few, replied, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Like St. Peter and the apostles, we must believe and be convinced that Jesus is the Holy One of God and that there is no other. Do I not only believe in the church teachings, do I love them? Is the belief in the Blessed Sacrament a matter of life and death for me? We cannot be a light, we cannot be a witness, an example, if we are not dying daily to our own will and ways and allowing ourselves to be transformed by Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament to follow the will of the Father. We also need to be vigilant that we don't take the Eucharist for granted. We need, as St. John Paul II proclaimed, to be open to Eucharistic amazement. Even in the quietness of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, he is encountering us, loving us, reaching out to us, saving us. Jesus desires to touch our hearts with each and every Eucharistic encounter. We must be open to that loving encounter every time. Listen to the words of St. Peter Julian Amard, a saint of the 1800s France. The Holy Eucharist possesses every virtue. It is a remedy for our spiritual infirmities, strength for our daily weaknesses, and a source of peace, joy, and happiness. The Eucharist, according to the Council of Trent, is a divine antidote that delivers us from common faults and preserves us from mortal sin. It is a fire that in an instant consumes the chief of our spiritual imperfections. Holy Communion is the war that God wages in us against our concupiscence and against the devil, whom our evil passions constantly invite and through his collusion with our unruly appetites holds some part of us in thrall. 
Did not Jesus say, come to me, all you who labor beneath the burden of slavery of your past sins, and I will refresh and deliver you. Holy Communion is more than a remedy. It is a force that gives us powerful assistance in attaining goodness, virtue, and holiness. So we have a great work to do in our mission to promote and teach about Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. But I have a great hope. Many of the seminarians I have met in our diocese have a great love for Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament and for Mary. I see many young adults and families seeking to grow in their faith. Last month, one of our own young adults was featured in the parable. He spoke about young adults looking for authentic Catholic witnesses. Deacon Rory Trainer, who has worked with young adults in the Manchester area, said, they love the Eucharist and Mary. And I see it in the example of many of you who are here today. So we keep going. We keep growing. We keep, with God's help, removing obstacles that are in our own hearts that keep us from spiritual growth and maturity. We keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Today would be the feast of the Queenship of Mary in heaven. As she is mother of us all, and she loves Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament more than we ever could, let us ask her intercession today to correct us, lead us, and guide us to a renewal of Eucharistic amazement in the Church in our own lives. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou <clears throat> among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Regina Jenny, letare, alleluia, qui aque menu isti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia, ora pro nobis Deus.